Welcome to the third segment of the first quarter QA forum for 2020, where I will be presenting some COVID-19 cases. Before you proceed with this brief presentation, and if you haven't done so already, I would strongly recommend watching Dr. Benjamin Strong's two hour long presentations on the subject, where he goes into much greater detail reviewing the imaging findings during the various stages of disease, as well as the current reporting guidelines. Those two lectures can be found on the VRAD CME homepage. With no disclosures to report, let's begin our discussion about how to approach reporting in COVID-19 cases. The first thing you need to ascertain is whether or not the referring clinician has specifically invoked COVID-19 in their clinical indication. If they have not done so, it's generally a good idea to avoid specifically mentioning COVID-19 in your report and instead provide a general differential diagnosis for the imaging findings. However, if your own clinical suspicion is high based on the combination of imaging findings, demographics, or other clinical information, it's a good idea to call the referring clinician and discuss the findings directly and attend your report accordingly. We're finding that sites are starting to use euphemisms like influenza-like illness to avoid specifically mentioning COVID. On the other hand, if the clinician specifically does indicate a concern for COVID-19 or even that the patient has tested positive, you should provide an opinion as to the likelihood that the CT findings are consistent with COVID-19, while always remembering that the findings are nonspecific in general. In addition, if your suspicion is high, you should call the site and discuss it with the referring clinician directly. Frankly, I'm handling most of these cases like stroke cases and calling one way or the other because I know there's a lot of anxiety on the ground about these patients and decisions are being made about whether or not to isolate or treat based on our findings. Here are the current reporting guidelines for chest CT and COVID-19 pneumonia. I think this is an important slide to keep handy, especially if you're seeing as many cases as I am these days. The first thing to notice here is the typical imaging appearance of COVID-19 pneumonia. As many of you already know, we're seeing lots of peripheral diffuse ground glass opacities, frequently with a rounded morphology and associated crazy paving. If you see those findings, you should say in your report that commonly reported imaging features of COVID-19 pneumonia are present, but that other etiologies could produce a similar appearance. By contrast, if the scan is completely negative, it's appropriate to say that there is no CT evidence of pneumonia, but that CT can also be negative early in the disease course. When we start getting into the indeterminate and atypical classifications, a little bit more finesse and nuance is required, and I think it's really important to consider the pretest probability in these cases. With that in mind, let's review some cases. Now, all of these come from my own personal experience, and with one exception, these are reflective of the typical imaging findings we're seeing with COVID-19 pneumonia. This first patient is a 21-year-old woman with cough, shortness of breath, COVID positive. I should also point out that the study was performed in one of the epicenters of the pandemic in the United States, so our pretest probability here is already very high. Let's scroll through these axial images and see if anything catches your attention. The findings are subtle and we did move rather quickly through the images, but I hope you were able to appreciate several scattered ground glass nodular densities. Here in the left upper lobe, peripherally in the medial aspect of the right lower lobe, and finally in the left lower lobe as well. Were my pretest concern for this patient not so high given the clinical indication, the location of the patient, and the fact that they are a known COVID positive, I probably would just describe these findings as nonspecific and move on.
But taking everything in concert, I think this is concerning for possible very early COVID pneumonia. So I put this in the indeterminate category, and I used a variation of the verbiage suggested in the guidelines. As I mentioned earlier, I also placed a call to the referring clinician to discuss my thoughts in more detail. I wanted to show you that case specifically because the imaging findings are really not that impressive. Given that the patient had tested positive for COVID-19, the referring clinician had a high index of suspicion, and this is a relatively new disease entity, I'm exercising an abundance of caution. Let's now look at a 54-year-old woman with cough, shortness of breath, rule out COVID. To our knowledge in this case, we don't have a patient with a positive test, but clearly the referring clinician is concerned. Let's scroll through the images together. Here are the coronal images from the same patient. This case is more representative of what we're typically seeing in the early stages of COVID-19 pneumonia. We have peripheral ground glass densities. With areas of interstitial thickening or so-called crazy paving. This constellation of findings in concert with a high pretest clinical suspicion is worrisome for COVID-19 pneumonia. It is therefore appropriate to include in your dictation that commonly reported imaging features are present and to place a call to the referring clinician to discuss. Our next case is a slightly older patient with an identical clinical history. As I scroll through the axial images, I'm looking for those telltale features we discussed, the peripheral ground glass densities, sometimes with a rounded morphology, frequently with associated crazy paving. As the disease progresses, we tend to get some subsegmental consolidation. Each of these cases is really a variation on the same theme. We almost always have the peripheral ground glass densities. And while they're not always rounded in morphology, they are frequently associated with crazy paving. Again, while it's important to remember that there is a differential diagnosis associated with these findings, taken in the context of the clinical picture, they are highly worrisome for COVID-19 pneumonia. Your report should accurately convey that concern and you should discuss it directly with the referring clinician. Our next case is a 63-year-old woman with acute respiratory failure and hypoxia. I will tell you that this case also comes from one of the epicenters of the pandemic in this country. So while COVID was not specifically invoked by the referring clinician, I think it's appropriate to treat this case as a rule out COVID. Let's scroll through the axial images together. On the lookout, of course, for ground glass densities and crazy paving, which I think we're already seeing in this case, there are some areas with a more rounded morphology. No real consolidation yet here, perhaps some peribronchial thickening. 
Again, this case comes from one of the epicenters of the pandemic, and the patient is in respiratory failure with hypoxia. Reviewing our findings, we have bilateral ground glass densities with a peripheral predominance. Most of these infiltrates are associated with the characteristic crazy paving. And that is more than enough to put us in the typical classification. And our impression should reflect that commonly reported imaging features of COVID-19 pneumonia are present. For this last case, we're going to look at a 52-year-old man with shortness of breath. Notice that the referring clinician has not specifically invoked COVID, and I can tell you that the case did not originate in one of the epicenters of the pandemic. We really don't know exactly what to expect as we begin scrolling through the axial images, but I think you can all appreciate that many of the typical findings of COVID-19 pneumonia are present. We have the characteristic bilateral peripheral ground glass densities, some of which demonstrate a more rounded morphology. The typical crazy paving is associated with many of these areas. And this patient also has areas of confluent consolidation or organizing pneumonia, which is consistent with more advanced disease. So in this case, the imaging picture and not necessarily the clinical presentation is what raises our concern for COVID-19 pneumonia. Once again, our report should reflect that concern. And in fact, when I spoke with the referring clinician, COVID-19 was not even on their radar in this case. So they were very appreciative of my phone call. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this review useful. And please, if you haven't done so already, head on over to the Mednax VRAD CME homepage for Dr. Strong's lectures on this topic, which I think are absolutely essential. I hope you'll also join me for the fourth and final segment of our first QA forum of 2020, where I will be discussing some GU cases.